We'll go ahead and get started. I want to thank everyone uh, who's attending here live. Welcome to the uh, Sabre Board of Directors Election Forum uh, for 2024. Tonight, you will hear from uh, all of the candidates for the two directors positions that will be elected uh, this year. Um, this is the first time we've done this program. We will record it uh, and we will uh, send this out to members alongside the election guide, uh, which we also distributed during uh, in This Week in Sabre this past week. Um, hosting, handling the duties of moderator uh, <laughs> will be Tom Larwin. Um, Tom has been a member of Sabre since 1989. Uh, and within that, uh, he's been a chapter leader uh, in San Diego, the Ted Williams chapter, through a number of roles for about 25 years. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Tom was the co-editor of the book uh, about the Padres' first 50 years. So I'm going to uh, get out of the way now and let Tom uh, Tom take the rest of the show over. Tom? Hey, well, thank you, Scott. And uh, welcome, everybody, to our candidate forum. Uh, and by the way, those 50 years of the Padres were some of the greatest years ever in baseball, um, just because they have maybe the lowest uh, winning loss record of all those teams that played during those 50 years doesn't really cut it. They had some really great games. But that's that's another subject for another night. Um, each of you, each of us received the election guide and it's to prepare us for the election. And this is, this forms another avenue to help us prepare. It's related to the election of two open seats on the board. Each of the seats will have a, a term of three years. This evening, you're going to have the opportunity to meet the candidates and there are eight candidates. And, um, I, I think we have, we're up to seven that are going to be here tonight and, uh, you'll hear from each one of those. You get an opportunity to, to meet them and hear from them directly. Uh, here's how we're planning to proceed. We're going to have all the candidates uh, be in a waiting room, so they won't be able to hear one another's responses. We will proceed through three rounds with each. Each round will have a different lineup of the candidates. One by one, I will invite each of the candidates to respond and allow two minutes for their response. Um, I have a timer, and uh, once the timer hits uh, 30 seconds, I will give them an alert. And then at the end of two minutes, I will stop the respondent, thank them, and move on to the next candidate. So that's kind of how we're intending to proceed. And uh, Scott, unless I butchered that uh, and you don't have anything to offer, we could get started with round one as soon as you're ready. Yes, that's right. I just this is this message is for the uh, candidates. We're about to move all of you back to the waiting room. Just stay in there. We will move you back into the meeting uh, when it is your time to respond. And uh, so so don't leave the meeting once you're in the waiting room. We will we will get you back in when it's your time. Thanks. Hey, Tara, are you here? Yes, I am. All right. 
Hello, Tara. This is Tom Larwin. I'm going to be your moderator tonight, and uh, Hi. welcome. You will have two minutes uh, for a response. I will provide you an alert when 30 seconds remain, and we're going to start out with this. Please provide a biographical introduction and share why you want to serve on Sabre's Board of Direction. Proceed. Sure. So I am running for re-election. I've served one term as on the Sabre Board of Directors, and it has been an absolute honor. I joined Sabre uh, about 20 years ago uh, in my early 20s. So it's pretty much been part of my entire adult life. And it's just been such an important part of my entire adult life as well. Uh, it's given me this sense of community that's been a total constant when I've changed jobs and when I've changed cities, I've looked up local Sabre chapters and been able to go to meetings there. So it's this built-in group of friends. It's honed my research skills. Uh, and it's really given me a sense of finding people who are like me and just um, total baseball geeks like me. Uh, on top of that, um, I uh, believe that I am the only candidate running who is uh, a millennial, um, and a millennial woman at that. And uh, I think that um, Saber right now is in a really good place. Uh, we have to work on uh, retaining membership um, because we have just, we're, we have 7,500 members and um, we have to, but in doing that, we also have to um, keep in mind that we need to um, be more diverse in order to retain these members and um, as well as uh, evolve with the times. And I think one of the ways to do that is we're going to have to recruit people of 30, my generation. 30 seconds. So, um, I, like I said, I have absolutely loved um, serving for the past three years hearing uh, your, okay, that's a little, um, I, I've absolutely loved um, being on the board and, you know, hearing everything you have to say. Uh, I would love the opportunity to serve again. I am, you know, familiar, I can work with the board. So, uh, and I come in with the same ideas that for I love. Two minutes are up, Tara. Uh, thank you very much. Next up will be uh, David Firstman. David, are you here? Yes, I am. All right. Can you uh, turn on your camera? Sorry. Yes, I am. Thank you. Hi, David. Tom Larwin here. You're Good evening, to... Tom. Thank <laughs> you for two... thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. You'll have two minutes for your response to the following question. I will provide an alert when there's 30 seconds left. And the question uh, that we're going to give you for this first one, first round, is please provide a biographical introduction and share why you want to serve on Sabre's Board of Direction. Proceed. Thank you, Tom. Uh, my name is David Firstman. I'm from Queens, New York. I've been a Sabre member on and off since 1989. I've been a convention goer since 2009. My day job is a data analyst for the city of New York. I'm a member of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. I've been a contributor to the Sabre Games Project and the Baseball Research Journal. I'm a two-time award-winning presenter at the national conventions. I've been an assistant at the Sabre Convention Trivia Contest and the Convention Registration Desk. Uh, I am the author of the book Hall of Name, which profiles 100 of the most unusual names in baseball history. And I'm currently working on a book profiling the longest, the players with the longest hitting streaks in Major League Baseball history from DiMaggio on forward. I have a BS in Athletic Administration and an MBA in Quantitative Analysis. Now, Sabre has provided me uh, enjoyment, education, and camaraderie for over 30 years, and I'd like to serve on the board of directors to help ensure the prosperity of the organization going forward by working to create age-appropriate materials for children. I believe that preteens are an untapped and deserving group that should be addressed. We have many creative people in this community, and many people in this organization, including educators, 
who would help with development of programming for preteens. I'm thinking of books. 30, 30 and seconds. And I'm also interested in providing, making sure that chapters provide some minimum level of programming and outreach. And I want to also ensure or look into the possibility of having live video presentations from the Sabre conventions for people who cannot get to the convention themselves, they would pay a small fee and then arrange for video conferencing to the actual ballroom sites. David, your time is up. Thank you and good luck to you. Thank you, sir. Hello? Andy, you're here. Yes. Um, let me see if I can unput myself on screen here. Let me figure that out. Yikes. So it looks like I'm unmuted. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. You should be able to hit the start video button on the lower left. Yeah, I'm on my phone, which makes everything. There we go. Am I? Let's see if this works. Can you guys see me? I'm not sure. Not yet. Okay. None. Where? Bad. All right, this is awful. I'm so sorry. I can see myself. Uh, uh, this. What's that reflection? Let's let's do this. Why don't we move forward with the the first bit, and uh, maybe maybe you'll find the video for the next question. I can also in in well I'm in the weight room maybe log in on on another computer and get a better view of this, but I let me answer your question uh, by, by audio at least for now. Thank you. Okay, Andy, this is Tom Larwin. Uh, Hi, Tom. Okay, we're speaking to Andy Andres, and the first round. Uh, please provide us a biographical introduction and share why you want to serve on Sabers Board of Direction. You've got two minutes for your response, and I'll give you. An alert when 30 seconds remain. Please proceed. Great. Thank you. I, uh, I've i been a member of Sabre for a couple decades plus now. I've always been interested in baseball research uh, just as, a, as an outsider, but then I made it more of a serious pursuit, both as a instructor of baseball analytics and trying to teach students the fundamentals of this game little brag sheet might be that uh, my course was the first college course in analytics and uh, gave a template for at least the early stages of thinking about baseball analytics uh, as a pursuit and not just as a way to do statistics. I've done various things through the through Sabre itself. Um, but one of the key things has been leading students uh, to uh, the to the Sabre Analytics meeting. And with that, uh, hopefully they've had a chance to uh, reach their hopes, dreams, and goals by getting jobs in the game. So I've been able in helping students and young people pursue their dreams in baseball and not just my own hopes and dreams around trying to become a baseball researcher myself done various studies, done various presentations at Sabre National, Sabre Analytics uh, over the years, and it's been a privilege to do to do all those things. You have 30 seconds I, remaining. I do think that uh, my bio mm -hmm. is uh, nothing outstanding, uh, but what I do have to offer, I really embrace the opportunity to come uh, join the directors and think more about how to expand the reach of this great organization. And that really is my, my main pitch is I think I have some experience dealing Andy, with- 
Uh, Andy, that's the time limit, and we'll see you in the next round, hopefully. Uh, yes. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bill, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, this is Tom Larwin. Welcome, Bill Perch. Bill, your first uh, question. Well, first of all, I'm gonna, you're going to have two minutes to respond in each round, and uh, I'll give you an alert when there's 30 seconds left, okay? Great. All right, round one. Please provide a biographical introduction and share why you want to serve on Sabre's Board of Direction. Proceed. Sure, sure. Good evening. I'm Bill Perch, and I'm a member of Chicago's Emil Roth chapter. I joined Sabre in 2016 because, as you recall, the Cubs had a fantastic season. I'm a Cubs fan from an extended White Sox family who married a Brewers fan. And my grandmother, who was a lifelong White Sox fan, admitted that the recessive gene must have kicked in with me. It wasn't possible. Tonight, all of our candidates are connected by a passion for baseball. I want to join Sabre's board of directors to help grow membership. And I see the key to that as building strong local chapters. In addition to Sabre's rich history of analytics, our chapters allow fans to connect across the country with each other. And I've seen this firsthand in our Chicago chapter. I had a chance to revitalize our chapter's newsletter, and I appreciate the national recognition that it's received. It's opened up a door to allow fans to share their knowledge on a wide range of topics to a larger audience. I also saw an opportunity to create Central Illinois chapter. I'm familiar with the region of the state that has a vast collection of Cubs fans, Cardinals fans, and White Sox fans, and saw an opportunity to bring them all together since every team's fan base has won a World Series in recent years. Bill, you have 30 seconds left. And outside of Illinois, I've had a chance to connect with chapter members across the country, whether or not it's virtual, a local in-person gathering, or at a national convention. It's our members who are the history and future of Sabre. And as a Sabre board member, I will represent all of these long, these strong local chapters. Thank you. That takes uh, care of your two minutes. We'll see you in the next round. Thank you. Hello, we have uh, Alan Cohen with us. Hello. Hi, Alan. Tom Larwin. Um, we're going. I'm going to give you your first question in a minute. You're going to have two minutes for your response. Uh, with 30 seconds left, I'll give you a, an alert. And the question is, please provide a biographical introduction and share why you want to serve on San Diego's uh, <laughs> Sabres Board of Direction. Go ahead, please. Well, uh, as honored as I am to serve on uh, San Diego's Board of Directors, I think <laughs> I'm going to stay in Connecticut for the time uh, being. But I am Alan Cohen. I'm a member and an officer of our local Smokey Joe Wood chapter. I've been in Sabre since 2011, and uh, I've been heavily involved in the bio project. I'm currently the head of the fact-checking team, which is a fancy way of saying I get to assign these things to a very talented group of fact-checkers. And uh, w since I came on board on December 13th of 2020, we have seen approximately 730 stories come through from the 19th century to the current day. I'm also involved uh, with RetroSheet, uh, doing the Negro Leagues project where we're doing each game of uh, the Negro Leagues going back from 1949 through 1938. We're doing some preliminary work now for 1937. Um, I uh, 
been to the last few conventions, done some presenting. Uh, anybody uh, around me any length of time knows that I'm into the Hearst Sandlot Classic. This was uh, something that went on, a youth game from 1946 through 1947. Yeah, and uh, 87 players made it to the majors, and it's been a delight of my life to interview about 25 of those players. I think that about sums it up. Uh, I want to be on the board because I think I can help. I can adapt to change, and um, I'll be there, uh, and I'll be responsive. Thank you. Thank you, Ella. Lou, are you here? Lou, you should be able to unmute and uh, start your camera, start your video. Lou, can you hear me, Lou? Uh, it here we go. I apologize. Go. My uh, my technical skills are, are are not the greatest on this. I'm I'm Tom Larwin, and welcome. Thank uh, you, Tom. You're going to have two minutes for a response, and I'm going to alert you when 30 seconds remain. And here's the question: Please provide a biographical introduction. And share why you want to serve on Sabres Board of Direction. You've got two minutes. Please proceed. Thank you so much. And I, I appreciate everybody uh, being here. You know, I must love baseball. And I'm one of the only Marlin season ticket holders. Uh -huh. and, and seeing such a large crowd here really intimidates me because there's more people here than when I go to a Marlins game. So I thank you all for, for allowing me to come and, and to speak and to offer my candidacy. I know there are a lot of really good qualified candidates. And I just want to let you know a little bit about myself. Uh, for the last 28 years, I've been a Broward County court judge. And that's my job. But my love is baseball. In the past few years, Professor Jarvis and I wrote a book called Law and the Business of uh, Baseball and the Law Cases and Materials, which we were honored to receive the 2017 Saber uh, Research Award. And I went up to New York and I received that award. And it was one of my great great lifetime thrills. In addition to my work with writing books with Professor Jarvis, I've written articles for Sabre. I presented at Sabre National Convention and I, I helped the South Florida Sabre chapter. I've been an educator uh, for probably 30 years or more, uh, educating uh, lawyers and judges. At one time I was a middle school band director. Uh, I like serving my community. I've been doing that and this capacity for 28 years, and I'll be retiring at the end of this year, which will enable me to give time to Sabre. In addition to that, for the last, well, for more than a dozen years, almost 20 years. You have 30 I've seconds left. I've been an adjunct professor at Mitchell Hamlin up in St. Paul, and I've been teaching a class there every summer called uh, Law and the Business of Baseball. So I, uh, I welcome your vote if you think I'm worthy of it. And I thank you, Tom, and I thank the other members for, for having an opportunity to listen to me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lou.
We got Peter. I'm here. Uh, Peter, Tom Larwin, welcome. Um, Thank you. You're going to have two minutes for your response. I'm going to give you an alert when there are 30 seconds left, and here we go. Please provide a biographical introduction and share why you want to serve on Sabre's Board of Direction. Please proceed. My name is Peter Kuhlbaugh. I have been a Sabre member for a little over 16 years. Currently, I serve as the president of the uh, Baltimore Babe Ruth chapter, which was uh, formed in 2015 at the Chicago Convention. Prior to that, I was the vice president uh, for about, to about seven years. Um, been involved basically in, in building the chapter from scratch. Um, I am, uh, right for the newsletter. Um, right now, I believe we are the, the largest chapter in Sabre. So I'm very, uh, pleased with that. Um, outside of Sabre, I work at the Babe Ruth birthplace and museum and have since 2007. I'm involved with the Baltimore Orioles in a volunteer role. And my day job is, uh, still. Uh, in a law firm as a paralegal, though I hope to be changing careers in the near future. I was nominated for this position um, by David Stinson, and I accepted. Um, I believe my uh, record on the chapter level um, is above average. Um, I don't think the East Coast and the Mid-Atlantic region is represented on the board. And I uh, look forward to, to adding my voice um, if elected this time around. Is that it? That's it. Thank you, Peter. We'll see you in the next round. Okay. So I think we're going to start round two with the first person will be Bill Perch. One of the candidates, uh, Roberta Newman, was unable to make it. So we'll have seven of the eight candidates that we'll be hearing from. Bill, you ready for round two? I'm ready. Okay. What skills are you bringing from your professional and or other nonprofit service experiences that will benefit Sabre and how do you intend to use them? You've got two minutes, Bill. Great. Um, well, I have spent my career working in marketing and communications and I've worked for park districts. I've worked for a community foundation, uh, philanthropic organization, and currently I'm working in the AEC world um, for an engineering firm. And the advantages that I can bring to Sabre as a not-for-profit is I understand what it's like to have limited resources in terms of staff sizes. Um, and I understand what it's like to fulfill big dreams and how you can work together. And from my experience working in marketing for not-for-profits, it's really connecting with your volunteers. And that's a case of going back to what I said in my introduction, that that strength really comes from strong local chapters, getting people involved, identifying other individuals with key skills that can help extend the board, extend Sabre's goals and its outreach. And I think that's where I can definitely come into play. Um, I feel that I'm a strong storyteller. I have a good opportunity connecting with other members, finding out what their passions are. The one idea that I've always stood for is that every member in Sabre is connected to baseball in extremely different ways. Again, you might have a particular team. You might have a particular research interest, baseball cards, or a particular era. And I've enjoyed working with other people to bring that passion out. And that will turn into growing membership. And that's how I feel I can get connected, bringing my marketing background. Thank you, Bill. We'll see you in the next round. Thank you.
You with us, Peter? I'm back. Okay. So this question is, what skills are you bringing from your professional and or other nonprofit service experiences that will benefit Sabre, and how do you intend to use them? You've got two minutes, Bill. No problem. Um, well, I've been in the legal field primarily for the last 20 plus years. So my number one skill um, in dealing with lawyers and deadlines and court dates and that kind of stuff is uh, organization. Um, I've worked on, on, on monster cases and uh, think uh, being very organized and disciplined has been one of my key factors uh, in my professional role and working long hours and, and no stranger to the hard uh, work and efforts. In my nonprofit role, I've also engaged with the public a lot, uh, the Babe Ruth Museum and with the Orioles. So, um, and though I'm not that young, I am connected to the younger generation by listening to people. Um, I will say I enjoy my volunteer and nonprofit roles much more than my day job, but I have to work in day job. So um, I like obviously talking baseball and talking history. So I bring in a wealth of knowledge and experience, um, both the, the dedication to knuckle down, do anything on a deadline sort of thing. But I also like to interact um, with the public um i like to, to to listen somebody who like myself who's who's been through some medical issues i've learned in the past decade or so um to listen more and to hear the other side 30 seconds i will say was not uh not something i used to do well in the past so um i bring a good ear and uh hard work and dedication to uh potential on the saber board thank you Thank you, Peter. See you in round three. Hi, Alan. Hello there. Okay. Here's the question. What skills are you bringing from your professional and or your other nonprofit service experiences that will benefit Sabre and how do you intend to use them? You have two minutes. Okay, I think my biggest skill is involved adaptability. Uh, in my career prior to Sabre, I was an insurance underwriter for 40 years. And the one thing we learned in that was adapting to change. Very few times would a day go as planned. The, there was no schedule or anything like that. You picked up things as they came along. So I have learned to adapt to change, and I think that is a major skill. I work well with other people, although sometimes I can talk too much. But I do work with other people well. I think my role with the... Uh, Fact-checking defines that. Um, I love the game. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, and I have my hat on now, is that I'm the data caster for the Hartford Yard Goats of the Eastern League, and I thank them for giving me the night off to be with you guys. Um, but adaptability is my main skill. Research, I am a researcher. Uh, I have... Pub, uh, had published by Sabre something like 150 stories between the bios, the game stories, and the essays. And I've learned all er errors of baseball. You have 30 seconds left. Uh, one thing uh, that I really enjoyed doing was our first Games Back project, where we had games from 1871 up till 2020. So I know all the errors of baseball. I know the, the numbers. And I think I can bring all of that to uh, bear as a member of the uh, board of directors. Thank you, Larry. Uh, Ellen, we'll see you in a couple minutes. Hello, David. 
Yes, I'm back. I'm thinking I'm back. Well, I can't see you, but I can hear you. Okay. There, there we, we go. go. All right. Here's your question. What skills are you bringing from your professional and or your other nonprofit service experiences that will benefit Sabre? And how do you intend to use them? You've got two minutes. Well, um, my day job involves um, synthesizing a lot of different information, mostly data driven statistical information, but I have to synthesize it and uh, dispense it in um, ways that are understandable to laymen who don't normally deal with data and don't normally deal with numbers. So I have to understand how to best present the, the research that I've done in a way that is understandable by various various people, whether it's commissioners or lay or lay people or people out in the field, and those kind of skills are necessary because you have a lot of different you have a lot of different populations within Saber itself who will understand various levels of the conversation that is going on about various topics. Um, I'm able to see the issue from many different perspectives. I'm very analytical oriented. And I can see from the pure number standpoint or the pure uh, issue standpoint, and then I can see the emotional standpoint too. And I'm able to harmonize that into one cohesive response that I think is beneficial to the, to the conversation that we will have as board members to bring ideas forward and to make make various issues go forward in you have our 30 seconds. Thank you. Uh, to make issues go forward, you know, such as when we want to put forth another issue, how do we best get that idea across to the membership, what regardless of their education or their experience or or their knowledge of various various complex issues? How do we get that across to the to the most people in the most direct way. And I think that's a skill that I can bring to the table. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you in the next round. Thank you, sir. Hi, Tara. Hello. All right, question. Okay. What skills are you bringing from your professional and or nonprofit service experiences that will benefit Sabre, and how do you intend to use them? You've got two minutes, Tara. Well, the first thing I think I bring is experience. I know how I've been on the board for three years, and I know how to work with the current board members. And I think, you know, both being able to work with them and knowing how Saber works from the inside means that you can kind of skip that sort of learning curve that, you know, it, it takes it takes a board member a while to, to sort of get their bearing and learn the ropes. And I think the fact that I've been there um, for one term, but, you know, not too long means that I kind of have that and that my ideas are still fresh. Uh, on top of that, you know, my day job, actually, what I do is a day job. I'm, I'm a problem solver. Uh, I work as an attorney for the city of New York, and I deal with constituents who um, have trouble with, uh, you know, their taxes. So I help constituents stop the city from, you know, taking constituents' homes or uh, levying their bank accounts. Um, so, you know, and I, I recommend solutions to help the city run better. So what I'm doing in my personal professional life versus what I do for Sabre all the time uh, the two of them are kind of aligned. Um, so, you know, I, I bring enthusiasm. I absolutely have loved, you know, being a board member. Um, I just, you know, love listening to people. Uh, I see, you know, I, I think that Sabre can definitely, um, you know, we, we're in a really good place, but we can't afford to be complacent. So, you know, just the idea of thinking how we can grow um, and just, you know, 30 seconds where, uh, and kind of looking to the future uh, and knowing that uh, Sabre is going to have to uh, recruit uh, more younger people to be more diverse and kind of knowing some of those, you know, social media platforms um, that can help get there. Thank you and we'll see you in the next round.
Okay, Lou, you ready? Can you hear me this time? I sure can. Thank you, Tom. All right, here's your question. What skills are you bringing from your professional and or your other nonprofit service experiences that will benefit Saber? And how do you intend to use them? You got two minutes, sir. Thank you very much. Well, uh, as a judge, I've got to be extremely organized. I have to make decisions. I have to listen to both sides before I make those decisions. I've been honored over the years to uh, to serve as in leadership role of, in the judges uh, down here in Florida and serve in an administrative capacity, leading judges and being responsible for more than just myself. Uh, teaching uh, is a big responsibility at the law school, making sure that my programs are done on time, under budget, uh, that uh, students are properly educated, that uh, I bring in the proper guests to speak. I've been able to tap into so many of my Sabre friends to help come and, and teach at the law school in Minnesota. Some have even flown in from as far away as Texas to come up and, and, and talk, or as far away as uh, Washington State to, to talk to the students during the weekend class in the summer. I try to stay active. I, I'm a member of the uh, I, IWBC. I try to participate in that. Um, I, when, when I get involved in something, it's not just a sideline membership. I try to participate as much as I can and, and bring knowledge with me that that can that can help out an organization. So that's what I bring. I bring over 40 years as an attorney uh, with understanding and not necessarily I can't advise the board on anything, but I, I can analyze things. And, and like I said, listen to both sides and making decisions to help the organization grow. Okay. That, we'll see you in the next round. Thank you. Thank you very much. Round three coming up. <laughs> Andy, you see me? Yes. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to round Thank two. You. Thank you. Okay. Here's the question. What skills are you bringing from your professional and or other nonprofit service experiences that will benefit Sabre? And how do you intend to use them? You've got two minutes, sir. Great. <clears throat> skills. Uh, I'm a university professor. I'm a lecturer. The skills of a lecturer are to synthesize information fast and sometimes you need to talk about stuff that you've just learned and make it cogent, coherent, uh, clear for your students in front of you. I deal with undergrad, undergrad students mostly these days, but I also love teaching graduate students because you can push, push, push them for their learning. The, the key is I'm involved with young people and young people who really are at the front end of what their hopes and dreams are and where they're headed. I think Sabre needs a little bit more emphasis on attracting young people to the organization. Now, maybe that's a controversial opinion. It's my opinion, but I think I can bring those skills of, 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 of being able to get in front of folks and convince them of certain things, organize a, a presentation around uh, information and present it well, and present it well to people who are going to receive the information. Beyond that, I've got a very analytical sort of approach to my research. I do a lot of work in data science, and it's very sort of, uh, you know, you have to be algorithmic and thoughtful. So I spend a lot of time thinking about strategy, about how to move. You have 30 seconds. Yeah, how to move uh, people a certain way. So I think those skills are beneficial to a board. The other thing I do at BU all the time, I'm, uh, I'm usually on university committees and, and they put me on boards because I'm affable and I'm big and loud and I can move the situation as needed. I think I can get along with these board of directors. I think I can help them and I think I can direct them towards goals that they need to achieve. Good, thank you. Your time's up and we'll see you in round three.
David? Hello, sir. This is the last round. You ready? Yes, sir. What do you consider either Sabre's greatest strength or Sabre's greatest weakness? And how would you either make the strength more valuable or begin the process of addressing the weakness? You got two minutes, sir. Um, the, the strength is, is our diversity. And I think um, to increase the diversity is, is actually a, a uh, opportunity for us. We have an opportunity to go further in terms of what we program for different um, different diverse uh, populations. And I'm, I'm speaking primarily, as I spoke in my introduction, about children, about programming for children that is age appropriate, uh, whether it is a video describing what Jackie, who Jackie Robinson was and what he did, or, or the exploits of Babe Ruth, or Think, things of that nature that is we have tons of people in our in our community in our organization who are capable of producing materials we produce all sorts of books we produce all sorts of videos and and pamphlets and things of that nature and zoom talks and yet we do not serve those who you know base ba major league baseball has left them behind too and so we need to reach out to an to a underserved population right now and get them get, get them while they're young. We're not grooming them to be baseball lovers, but we, we have an opportunity here, especially if they're if their parents are baseball fans. Let's let's start working with their kids. Let's make opportunities for their kids to learn that baseball is something to to love. And that, that is our strength. Our strength is our, our community that is capable of producing multi multi-dimensional materials in all sorts of formats. And I think that the children are the next opportunity, the young children are the next opportunity for growth within our organization. Thank you. Thank you, David. You're Thank welcome. You. All right. Hi, Lou. How you doing? Okay. Your last question. All right. What do you consider either either Saber's greatest greatest strength or Saber's greatest weakness? And how would you either make the strength more valuable or begin the process of addressing the weakness? Two minutes, sir. Our greatest weakness is that our membership is too old. Absolutely too old. Uh, too many folks remember the 1969 World Series. And uh I was 14 when that happened, 13, 14. Uh, so that, that's the problem. Uh, we have members that are, are, are too old. We need, we need to develop a younger base. We need to go out to uh, colleges and, and high schools, recruit ball players who are interested in this, uh, have a greater, greater presence on campus. They're kind of no different than, say, when I was active years ago in Kiwanis, when Kiwanis would have what they call the key club or a circle K, and we would help form smaller groups of students who became active in the smaller groups and then eventually moved up to, to, to Kiwanis. Same thing with the JCs, with the Lions Clubs or things like that. Service organizations that kind of nurture and, and, and bring, bring people. So that's one of our, our, our strong weaknesses. Uh, one of that real weakness, one of our strengths is the amount of research that we do and the intelligence of our members, because our members are not just baseball fans. They're not casual baseball fans. These are individuals that really understand the game. And we have to make it so that others understand the game in a simpler fashion. One of the ways we can do this is by when we have our conferences, is that no, there's that we use a concept that I've used for a long time called team teaching, that, that we take a older and I don't mean older person, 30 seconds. somebody with more experience and pair them with somebody with very little experience to give them the confidence so they can come and do this. So we need we do need younger people. And and, and, and I think that's a, a weakness. But at the same time, we have individuals that know more about baseball than any other organization on this planet. And I thank you. And if anybody has any questions, you can DM me on my Twitter page or X page baseball in law. And I thank you for the opportunity to be heard. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. Good luck to you. Thank you.
Andy, here's your question. What do you consider either Sabre's greatest strength or Sabre's greatest weakness? And how would you either make the strength more valuable or begin the process of addressing the weakness? You've got two minutes, Andy. I think the strength is this historic, it's been a long history. There's so many uh, great scholars and fans that have contributed to Sabre and made it this rich organization, which has fostered both the historical research of baseball and its importance to American culture, but also it was the advent of this revolution in the game, which is data science in baseball. So that's a strength. It should continue. It should be fostered as much as possible. I think I can offer a lot of help around the analytics side and how to foster that. I I would say, as I mentioned this before, I think the greatest weakness, there's some, uh, my, my opinion, again, you can disagree. I think we have to think more strongly about demographics. We have to be extremely strategic about how to get young people involved in Sabre any way possible. Vince Gennaro and I started talking about this well over a decade ago, about how to think about to young, getting young people involved in Sabre. I, I, I think I'd be much more dedicated to this proposition and I would lean into the, the board itself and their knowledge and their understanding. And I think I can offer one perspective of being in the game with young people and really understanding their hopes and dreams and goals around joining this great industry of baseball. 30 seconds. And I think I can offer that. I, I call out a weakness. Some people, like I said, uh, some people might be upset by that, but I do think that I can offer a lot of support around, you know, of recruiting more people who are young and fresh and have more ideas and get them involved in this great organization. Okay, thank you, Andy. Thank you. Good luck to thank you. Hi, Bill. Hello. Here's your next question. What do you consider either Sabre's greatest strength or Sabre's greatest weakness? And how would you either make the strength more valuable or begin the process of addressing the weakness? You've got two minutes. Sabre's greatest strength is its membership itself. That's what built the history of the organization and that's what's going to continue into the future. Everybody has their own particular connection to baseball. And that's the organization's greatest assets is that everybody is an expert in a wide range of opportunity or op a, a different topics that they can, they can trust. And to go back to what I've been saying by focusing on strong local chapters, that's how the organization is gonna grow. That gives us the opportunity to identify its future leaders who made contributions to research, who made contributions on local levels, building membership, planning events, getting people together and building relationships between other chapters. And I think that's something that I've already been working on. Um, again, helping to revitalize its newsletter, identifying individuals within our local membership to get them involved to bring their special skills to the overall organization. And I think that's truly how the organization will continue to grow, how they'll benefit from it. And in terms of weakness, it's just making sure that we're, we're constantly growing, growing new membership. And um, I've, I've taken those steps right now to, to focus on that for the, the, the strong local chapters, and I'll continue to do that as a member of the board. Thank you, Bill. Good luck to Thank you. Hi, Alan. 
Hello. Here's the question. What do you consider either Sabre's greatest strength or Sabre's greatest weakness? And how would you either make the strength more valuable or begin the process of addressing the weakness? You have two minutes. Okay. I think Sabre's strength is giving an avenue for researchers to be published. We have 6,500 stories in the bio project by hundreds of people who are being heard and doing research. And our strength is enabling that research to continue. Um, as far as a weakness is concerned, my only issue, uh, the first time I went to a convention was back in 2012. I had joined in 2011. I went to Minneapolis and had the experience of my life. What I want to be able to have Sabre do is have people come to those conventions and or any event that we sponsor at the local level and have the time of their life and have it be fun and not necessarily be a business. 99% of us are volunteers. So we have to make it fun for people. If we make it fun, it we will attract members. We want to attract young members. We want to attract all sorts of research. 30 seconds. Um, and we give the people the avenue to do it. We just have to become better known. We have to get out into the community and be known as Sabre, the research and on the analytical kings of baseball. Thank you, Alan. Good luck to you. Hi, Tara. Hello. Here's your question. What do you consider either Sabre's greatest strength or Sabre's greatest weakness? And would you, how would you either make the strength more valuable or begin the process of addressing the weakness? You have two minutes. I think Sabre's greatest strength is the fact that it is the foremost research organization for baseball. It has the greatest minds uh, all over. Um, but the problem is, is that um, it's kind of, I feel like it's only known for one aspect of it. Um, and I think a lot of people know it uh, for its analytics. And as we know, it's it's so much more than that. It, it attracts everybody, you know, from you know, historians to cons consumers to people in the business. And we've done a lot to lure youth through the analytics conference. Um, I think it's a great way. I think something like I heard that have 50% of our members have joined in the past 10 years. Um, so we've really done a lot to expand it. But I think the, the issue is the fact that we are doing a lot to bring in the youth. They're not, they're not staying around because they're coming to network at analytics to get a job in baseball. Uh, they are interested in, in, in STEM. They're interested in business. And um, Sabre, I feel like there's a lot more staying power if we can do something to reach out to people who are future historians, people in the humanities, people who um, are researchers, I don't know, librarians, something, people who actually, um, you know, want to engage in more than just the, you know, analytics or business side or just come to get a job because people who are just, you know, coming for that are, you know, they're going to get their networking in, they're going to find their job and then they're going to get out. You're going to retain members by showing them seconds. that. You know, this is a place where they can really thrive. This is a place where, you know, that's open to so many different types of people. Um, and, you know, one way also to do that is to expand the new membership ambassador program, which um, I am currently working with the uh, membership coordinator to do. Thank you, Tara, and good luck to you.
Hey, Peter. Hello. I'm back. All right. Here's a question. What do you consider either Sabre's greatest strength or Sabre's greatest weakness? And how would you either make the strength more valuable or begin the process of addressing the weakness? You have two minutes, Pete. Well, most people probably go for the strength. I'll go for the weakness. Um, Sabre's biggest weakness or problem in my mind is its name. Um, unfortunately, thanks to uh, Bill James and that sort of crowd, um, when the general populace, even just casual baseball fans, hear the term Sabre, um, even though they don't know necessarily what it stands for, they think numbers. Sabre metrics, of course. Um, that comes back to haunt us as a group because um, the average Joe here's saber think saber metrics and things you guys as a whole are all about the numbers and we kind of get tossed aside or, or pushed into a corner um that people don't have all the information of course um obviously research and the accurate preservation of our, our great game which goes back to the civil war is what we're all about um you know, we've been around 50 plus years, so I, it's unlikely our name is going to change. Um, but since we're known primarily like NASA as an acronym, um, we kind of have um, a little bit of a reputation um, for being a certain kind of people. Um, and that's obviously not uh, entirely true. It's like having the last name Stalin, if you're of Russian descent, you have no connection to the historic figure of that name. So, um, you know, it just my uh, recommendation would be we need to refer to ourselves not by our acronym, but maybe by our full name or come up with something else, uh, maybe to to better our standing in the eyes of the uh, average person and baseball fan. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, and good luck to you. Well, um, it's uh, a few minutes after six. The betting was we won't get it done by six, and uh, but six oh five is pretty good. Uh, Scott, you got yeah. You know, we were unable to hear from Roberta tonight, but you've got seven pretty good candidates, and I don't know if you got room for all seven of them on the board, but uh, you're not going to go wrong with what we got. I'm very impressed, and uh, it was a pleasure to be the moderator. Uh, I had my fingers crossed. I, I had so many things could happen in it. Getting, getting it started in the first round, uh, that, that helped. And after that, it really was pretty smooth. So good idea. I, uh, I hope we continue it. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Tom. And you are correct. Uh, we are, we are fortunate. Saber is fortunate, not just me, uh, that we have a, a really great field of candidates to join the board of directors. Um, I want to thank all the candidates for joining us, um, and wish you the best of luck in the coming election. I want to thank everybody who took the time to watch this live um, and those who watched all the way to the end once we've got it posted. Uh, and most of all, I want to thank you, Tom. Thank you for uh, thank you for moderating this evening. I know it's uncharted, uncharted territory. We sort of made history this evening uh, by putting this on. So uh, so thanks to you for doing that. And um, we'll see everyone in August in Minneapolis. Thanks. Thank you.